Well, hello and good evening and happy, what day is it? I don't even know what day it is anymore. Is it Saturday? Is it Friday? Is it Tuesday? Is it, it doesn't even matter. Happy whatever day of the week it is to you. I'm excited about what we're going to share tonight because um, I don't know about you, but I've been feeling a lot of spiritual pressure. There is so much in the atmosphere right now. There is so much movement in the spirit. And I really feel like um, God is really trying to let us know that we need to get into position, that things are coming down the pike, that we need to be in position for. Um, I believe that 2020 is the year of of manifested breakthrough but in order for that to happen for a lot of people there is some pre-preparation that much of the kingdom of God needs to be about doing even now so if people who are thinking about waiting until January I've already started uh, my preparation for 2020 I'm already working on goals I'm already um, you know getting things in order so that by the time you know really by the time November hits I want to already have my my strategies as I have prayed into them already in place, already in motion. So I'm really starting that now. Um, tonight, I wanna talk about what I believe is the beginning of a convergence. I wanna to touch on this. I'm gonna probably break this video up in several pieces so that as I put it on my YouTube channel, it won't be so long. But the first thing I wanna talk about tonight is what I believe is that we are on the cusp or the precipice of the convergence of several significant scriptures as it relates to sowing, to reaping, to preparing, to bring in a harvest and the purpose for which that harvest will be used. So I posted, I said, we, uh, uh, as I, so that's what we're going to talk about. So let me go ahead and just dive right in. So Father, I thank you for causing my thoughts to be clear, concise, succinct, comprehensible, that not only will people get it, but that it will bear fruit in their spirit. It will synchronize with what you have already been releasing into their hearts, into their minds, and it will activate the capacity to take action and move forward rapidly, that they will hop on the train of rapid acceleration. They will not miss it to the right or the left. They will hear your voice. They will activate the movement and they will attain the desired results for the kingdom of God. So let me share with you the four scriptures that God has been speaking to me. He's been drilling these four passages home and uh, it, it has been so pronounced in fact that everything that I've done I'll, as, I, as I'm going about my day and you guys know when I work in my yard or work in my garden, God speaks to me. That's where I get like really serious conversations with the Lord. But the four passages are passages of scriptures that I believe are, are really pronounced. Number one, the Lord that had the passage that the Lord has been talking to me about heavily is Psalms 67, Psalm 67. And that passage says, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause your face to shine upon us. Verse two is powerful. Note the words that your way may be known upon the earth and your saving health or your salvation, healing and wellness among all nations. Then it goes on to, if you go on down to verse four, it says, let the nations be glad. Now what we are getting ready for is the nations coming into the kingdom. There is coming a revival. We know that. And I don't even know if the word revival is even appropriate for what's about to transpire. Um, I, I think the word revival speaks to a restoration of something that's already been. I think what has coming, what is coming, there is no model for it. There is no paradigm. There is no example for us to look at in the past and get an image of what God is about to do. Okay. Verse six goes on, says, then shall the earth yield her increase. Even our own God shall bless us. Verse seven, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. So now the first scripture, there are four that God has been dealing with me about. So the first passage is Psalm 67, because I believe that the increase that he is preparing to release into the lives of those who are his is a, pre is a preceding move so that there will be sufficient resource 
universe to manage the infusion of people coming into the kingdom of God. Now, so that's the first one. The next scripture that he's been speaking to me is Isaiah 55 verses 10 and 11. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud that he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now there are a lot of people who have been experiencing extreme storms, extreme difficulty, extreme hardship. Personally, I was in a three year battle, okay? Over three years and we are at the end of it, praise God. But people have been in these battles, but any storm, one thing about a storm, it, it, it may rain and it may produce a lot of water, but it does produce the resources necessary for a harvest. Verse 11, Isaiah 55, 10 and 11, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth so that it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which it pleases. So now we know in, chapter, in, in Psalm 67, we see the word talking about the earth is going to yield her increase so that God can bless us. And as God blesses us, the ends of the earth are going to fear him. The kingdoms of this world are becoming, are going, are becoming, Coming the kingdoms of our God. Okay? Now, here's the next passage. This one is 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 11. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he that disperses abroad, he is given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Now he that gives seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food and multiplies your seed sown. So now we see, now what is the purpose of this increase? Go back to Psalms 67. He says in Psalm 67 that, that the people praise him, that the earth shall yield her increase so that God can bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Why do we God, does God want to bless us and cause his face to shine up? That his ways may be known upon the earth and his saving health and salvation among all nations. So the purpose for this rapid accelerated increase that is, yeah, it's, it's here. God is saying, you folks, to, to get ready, get in position, do things, okay? Get stuff ready now. And so God is able to make all grace abound. Why does he need grace to abound? So that he can minister seed to the sower and bread to the eater and multiply the seeds that you sow so that we can be enriched in everything and to all so that we can cause so, uh, and to all bountifulness which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Okay. So now we see those passages. Let me review them again. Psalm 67, Isaiah 55, 10 and 11, 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through, uh, 9, 8 through 11. And then here's, um, and then the last one that I'm going to touch on is Amos 9 and 13. Amos 9, 13 says, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that sows seed, and the mountains shall drip, drip, drip sweet wine, and the hills shall melt. Now, I find it fascinating that the next passage, verse 14, talks about what has already transpired with the nation of Israel. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. So now, what is what am I talking about? We are talking about in this first segment that there is coming a move of God where he is positioning his people letting us know that I am getting ready to bring seed into your hand so that you will have resource to sow not necessarily to eat you will have resource to sow because when you receive a seed it is not enough to feed you it is not enough to eliminate your debt. 
It's not enough to elip to pay your bills. It's not enough to get you caught up. What God does is when he gets ready to position you for increase, he gives us a seed. He gives us access to resource. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not teaching you this so that people can sow to me. I'm not a church. I'm not a ministry. I'm an individual who hears the word of God and the voice of God, and I'm just crazy enough to tell people what I'm hearing, okay? Okay? So, but if if you understand how the law of sowing and reaping works, and we're going to cover that in another video, I'm going to do several quick ones tonight so that these aren't so long. So in this first segment, here is the message that I want you to understand. There are four passages that are converging. Those four passages in the convergence start with Psalm 67, where God is saying, I want my people to understand that I I'm getting ready to bless you. God be merciful to us and bless us, causing his face to shine upon us. Why does, his, does he need us to prosper? Why does he need to bless us? So that his ways may be known upon the earth and his saving health, grace, and mercy, salvation among all nations. Then verse 4, Psalm 67, 4, it says, Let the nations be glad, for thou shalt for, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Verse 6 says, Then then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. Okay? And now, the next passage, Isaiah 55, 10, and 11. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns, but not waters the earth and makes it bring forth, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So the Lord is letting you know, I'm going to make sure that you have provision to eat. But you got to sow first. You have to sow first. It's essential that we understand that the seed must be planted before the bread can be eaten. Okay? Now I'm going to talk about that in another in the next video. So now let's go ahead and look at the next passage. The next one in this in this series of passages uh, is 2 Corinthians. And God is 9, 8 through 11. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Okay? As it is written, he has dispersed abroad and given to the poor that his right. God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Why does it need to remain? Now he that gives seed to the sower gives also bread for your food and multiplies the seeds that you sow so that it can increase the fruits of your righteousness. In other words, our capacity to do the things that need to be done, to get those, rescue those out of sex trafficking, to cover and eliminate those who are losing their homes, to, to provide resource so that there is sufficiency. Now, where do we see a model of this transpiring? The only other place that I have seen this model transpire is in the book of Acts. If you go to the book of Acts, chapter 4, starting around verse 34, Acts 4, 34, it says, well, let's look at verse 33. It says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them. Neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were, notice past, past tense, were possessors of lands or houses, sold them and brought the price of the things that were sold. Now, when God, one of the things that is critical that people understand, we need to own resource. And one of the biggest assets that you can have for creating and sustaining wealth is we need to position ourselves for the blessing. We need to position ourselves to attain and gain resource so because what happened next? When they sold the resource, they had so much provision and laid down and laid them down. At the, they took the provisions they had possessors of lands or houses, sold them and brought the price of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Jose, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, 
having land, sold it and brought the money. Having land. In other words, he had resource. If we don't have resource, we're not going to be in position to do what needs to be done. And so what God is saying to us now, I'm trying to get you ready to get the resource that you're going to need for the next season. So that when the harvest time comes, when the gathering comes, when people start coming into the kingdom, just like it was happening in the book of Acts, someone's going to have to have some resource to make sure that things are managed. And that doesn't necessarily mean giving resource to a local church because the local church has changed. You and I have to, have to understand now that we are in a season where we have to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. So on that note, I'm going to end this segment and I'm going to start the next segment talking about hearing the voice of the Spirit of God and understanding what to do with the seed, where to do, where, how do you know where to sow your seed, how do you differentiate if it is a house where you should be sowing, or if it is not, what do you do with the seed so that you can have access to seed that increases? We'll be right back after this.